We're going to continue looking at work and energy today. In particular, uh, we're going to start out with the concept we ended with last time, and that was conservation of energy, or particularly conservation of mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy of a system of objects. And if we only have conservative forces acting, then that total of kinetic plus potential energy stays the same, has a constant number. Um, now, the amount of potential and kinetic energy might change. It might shift back and forth, but when you add it all together, you get the same total. Just like we saw in the example um, of the letter going down the hill in the previous lecture, as well as the pendulum swinging back and forth. Well, what forces are conservative? There are two conservative forces that we are talking about this semester. Um, one's the gravitational force, and the other is the force of a spring. And we looked at the gravitational force acting on the pendulum last time and the sledder last time. And what I want to do now is I want to look at a spring force. So let's consider that we have a spring and it is uh, at rest on a frictionless surface. And it's neither stretched nor compressed, so it's at what we call its natural length. There's no energy stored here. Now, in a previous lecture, I mentioned the fact that work can be positive or negative, and that that positive and negative had an important meaning. And that meaning is to indicate transfers of energy from one object to another object. Well, when any force that is not a conservative force acts on an object, energy is transferred from one of those objects to another. If work is positive, then you add energy to an object. If work is negative, you take energy away from an object. That's what the positive and negative sign means. So let's see how that works here in this particular example. Since our spring is unstretched, I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to have to come along with my hand, grab the end of it, and pull it to stretch it. Well, that means my hand is going to apply a force to the spring and move the end of the spring through some distance. In other words, my hand is doing work on the spring. So initially, there's no kinetic energy here and there's no potential energy stored in this spring. but I grab the end of the spring with my hand and pull with a two Newton force, and I'm gonna stretch this spring 0.5 meters. Now in doing so, I do positive one joule of work because the force points in the direction um, of the distance that the object moves. So I do positive work on the spring. What that means is I have transferred energy to the spring from my hand. And so now the spring will have one joule of stored potential energy, and that came from my hand. Of course, assuming I'm still hanging on to the spring now at this point, it still has zero kinetic energy. So you can see that the total energy has actually gone up. We started with zero energy in the spring, and now it has one joule of energy and that came from my hand. Now when I let go of this spring, it is going to shorten in length, um, and as it does, it's gonna move back through the equilibrium position here. And as it moves through the equilibrium position, its potential energy will be zero, but its kinetic energy will now be one joule. Because once my hand lets go of the spring, the only force acting now is the force of the spring. And we will compress on the other side a distance of half a meter. 
And at that distance, the potential energy will be one joule, the kinetic energy will be zero joules. At the very beginning, positive work was done by a non-conservative force, my hand, and it added energy to the system. That energy then remained constant at one joule as the spring force acted on the spring to move its end back and forth. The energy transferred from potential to kinetic and back to potential again, but the total remained the same. So here is where we have the conservation of mechanical energy of this system. Now let's go back and look at the sledder from the example in the last lecture. Uh, we assumed in the previous lecture that this person was gliding down a frictionless hill. And we saw how the uh, total energy that this letter had, potential plus kinetic, kept the same value the whole time, even though the potential and kinetic changed their individual values. Well, today we're going to assume that this is not a frictionless hill. We're going to assume that a frictional force of 80 newtons acts in the opposite direction that this letter travels. Since this letter still starts at 9 meters above the bottom of the hill, this letter starts out with 6,174 joules of energy. And we're going to assume that this letter starts from rest, and so it has zero joules of kinetic energy. One of the things we didn't know in the previous lecture was what the length of the actual hill was. We didn't need that, but we're going to now, and that is 15 meters. Because as the sledder travels down the hill, that frictional force is going to do work. And that frictional force is not one of the two conservative forces we've talked about, gravity and spring forces. So that means that the work it does is going to change the total energy of our sledder. So the total energy the sledder starts with is 6,174 joules. Now let's look at the sledder as um, it gets to the same point we looked at yesterday, or Tuesday, and that is at a height of 4 meters from the bottom of the hill. Well, I can calculate the potential energy of the sledder at this point. It's just mass times gravity times height. 2,744 joules, same value we had the other day. But now, I need to figure out the work done by the frictional force. That frictional force has acted along a distance of 8.3 meters along the hill. And so it has done negative work of 664 joules. That is energy that has been taken away from the sledder. So I started with 6,174 joules of energy, but friction has taken away 664 joules which leaves me with 5,510 joules. So I have less energy for kinetic energy than I did when the hill was frictionless in our example on Tuesday. Negative work means to take energy away from an object. Now at the bottom of the hill, the potential energy is zero because we're at a height of zero from the bottom of the hill. And friction has now done work along the entire 15 meters of the hill. So we can calculate the work done there. That's negative 1,200 joules. So I started out with 6,174 joules, but friction has taken away 1,200 joules of energy. 
which means I've only got 4,974 left for kinetic energy. Negative work means to take energy away. Where does that energy go? Friction converts kinetic energy into heat energy or thermal energy. It's the heat energy of the sled and the snow. And this should make sense to you. If you've ever taken your hands and put them together on a cold day and you rub them back and forth against one another, you are using this property to heat your hands. You are turning the motion energy of your hands into heat energy in your hands through the frictional force between your hands. Now, one of the problems with friction is the fact that this heat energy cannot be collected and contained and turned back into motion energy because heat energy spreads out, it dissipates. So we can't collect it all back. This is why we try to minimize the amount of friction that acts in mechanical systems like cars, for example. Um, we use oil in the engine to try and minimize the frictional force. That way, um, more of the energy stored in the gasoline can become the kinetic energy of the car. Let's look at another example. Let's look at a person riding on a Ferris wheel. And the Ferris wheel has a radius of five meters. Let's say that our person has a mass of 40 kilograms, so hmm, probably a child, and that the Ferris wheel um, goes around such that the person has a constant speed of three meters per second. Well, we can calculate the kinetic energy then of the person here, and that's 180 joules. And I can also calculate the gravitational potential energy. Now, since this is as low as the person will ever get, we'll say that they have zero gravitational potential energy at this point. And now, let's look at the kinetic and potential energy of the person at the top of the Ferris wheel. Well, the kinetic energy is still 180 joules because the speed is constant. So that hasn't changed. But the potential energy has changed because the person is now 10 meters higher than they were to start with. So they now have 3,920 joules of potential energy. They started with 180 joules of energy, and as they rose to the top, they now have 4,100 joules of energy. The person has gained energy. Well, the energy has to come from somewhere. And it comes from the Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel has to do positive work of 3,920 joules to raise this person to that 10 meter height above the bottom of the Ferris wheel. And the energy the Ferris wheel has actually is electrical energy because this is going to be connected to um, electricity, the electrical grid. And so positive work means that 3,920 joules of energy has been transferred from the electric grid to this person. Now let's look at the going down part. It's just the reverse. The person starts with 4,100 joules of energy at the top and ends up with 180 joules of energy at the bottom. The person loses 3,920 joules of energy. So negative work is being done of 3,920 joules to lower the person. And this energy, this negative work, is friction that acts at the axle, basically, um, of this Ferris wheel. And it takes that 3,920 joules of energy and turns it into heat energy at that axis. 
those mechanical parts that are rubbing over one another are going to get very hot. So in this process of the Ferris wheel going up and down and up and down, we find that energy is transferred from the electric grid ultimately into heat energy. This is a process of transfer of energy from the electric grid to the Ferris wheel, a positive transfer, and then taking energy away from the Ferris wheel and turning it into heat, a negative transfer. And this happens over and over and over again as long as the Ferris wheel continues to spin.